Hello Microscopists, this is Eric Miller from Instructinate, and if you want to transform your micrographs from this into this, then stick around while I share this pretty cool colorization technique that I developed some years ago, which I call multi-detector color. While this technique is very simple in practice, I'm going to spend some time explaining how and why it works and how to make it work best for you. At the end, we'll discuss some other options and final touches you may want to try on your own images. If you want to skip the explanation and jump right to the quick version of these instructions, go to this timestamp. Explanation time! Jumping in the Wayback Machine, many years ago there was a microscopist who thought it would be neat to put multiple SE detectors into his chamber and apply different colors to them to create basically different colored shadows in the image. Now this was a very novel idea, but unfortunately not very practical, as most of us do not have spare Everhart Thornley detectors lying around that we can bolt onto our SEM. As I pondered weak and weary, the problems of how to easily colorize images in the SEM when this older technique of attaching extra detectors gave me an idea. Now, I don't have extra SE detectors to throw around, but I do have a BSE detector with multiple segments. Now, these BSE segments allow you to get multiple directional or shadowed images in the SEM. After a few unsuccessful tests, I was eventually able to find a good method for combining multiple images from the different segments of the BSE detector to create a directionally colorized micrograph. This is how it works. As I just mentioned, we need a segmented BSE detector on our microscope to make this work. The kind I prefer has four quadrants, like this. We'll be able to turn the different segments on and off to capture multiple shadowed images of the sample. There are other configurations of BSE detectors out there, so which will work for us? A two-segment detector like this will work. A quadrant detector with two rings will work since we're only concerned with the quadrants, not the rings. However, if you have a BSE detector with only one element or only rings, this will not work since we won't be able to get directional shadows from these configurations. However, I'll discuss an alternate method that doesn't require the BSE detector later on in the video. Image capture is the first important step in this colorization process. To be able to colorize this correctly, we'll need three to five different images of the same area. First, we'll start off with what I call the master image. This is just a normal image of the sample. This can be an SE or BSE image. I prefer it to be an SE image when possible, but if you're dealing with a non-conductive sample or are running this, the instrument in variable pressure mode, then a BSE image is fine too. Now, when I say BSE image, I mean a BSE image with all the segments on or positive, uh, just a normal BSE image. Then what we will do is take multiple images using different segments of the BSE detector. These images are what I call the color images or color layers, even though they're not in color to start off with. This name will make sense later. There are a few ways to go about capturing them, however. One way is to take a single image with a single segment of the detector. So in this case, we have the A segment on and the other segments are off. This gives us a shadow on all parts of the sample facing away from that segment. If we use this technique, we'd go through and take three more images from the other segments, B, C, and D, or the left and right segments uh, of our BSE detector if that's all we have. However, I think a better option is to use the topography or topo function to capture these images. So how is that different and why is it better? First, instead of only collecting the signal from a single segment, we'll be using all four segments, but in different ways. In this case, we have A and D segments set to positive and the B and C segments set to negative. So what does that mean and why is that different from being off? Positive is additive. So if a segment is set to positive, signal from that segment will be added to the image. Basically, signal that hits that segment shows up as white. Negative is subtractive. That means that any signal that hits this segment will be subtracted from the image. Another way to think of it is that signal comes out as black in this condition. So why is this more desirable than the single segment collection? Uh, in this case, we're using all four segments and collecting a lot more signal. That's always great. Okay, so we should end up with one master image and two to four directional BSE images, or color images as I call them. We'll start by opening them all in Photoshop. 
We'll take one, it doesn't matter which one, and hit Control A to select all of the image. We then hit Control C to copy everything we've selected. Then we'll hit Control N to make a new image. We'll make a new image the same size as the image we just copied onto the clipboard. We can then Control V to paste the image there. We'll then select all and copy and paste all of our other images into this new file that we've made. In the end, we should have four to six layers over here. I'll label the master image layer so you can keep track of it easier during this video, but we'll also want this master image layer to be on the bottom of the other layers, but on top of the background layer. We also want the background layer filled completely black. To do that, we'll select the background layer. We'll go over to the other side of the screen and make sure the top color layer is black, then select the fill bucket and click on the image. That should fill our background completely black. We'll also make sure that this new image is set to RGB or CMYK color. Now we need all these images to line up, and they should, but depending on your sample, your stage, or the phase of the moon, they may not line up exactly. It happens sometimes. So we might need to align these layers a little bit. To do that, make sure the master image is at the bottom and turn off all but one of the BSE images and set its opacity to 50%. You should be able to see if it's lined up or not fairly easily. If it's not, then use the mouse and the move tool to drag the color layer around so that it's close. You can then use the arrow keys to move the image around by single pixels until it's lined up. Do the same thing with the other color layers until everything is nice and straight. Always remember to move the color layers around and line them up to the master image and not the other way around. After we aligned our images, some of the edges might be a little messy or maybe we have a data bar from the SEM still in the image. In either case, we'll need to crop that out. For this first go through, we're going to use the easy version of colorization. So we're only going to use two of these directional BSE images. We'll choose those right now. And what we'll want to do is use two opposing BSE images like this. We don't want two images that share some of the same positive and negative segments. We want opposite images. We'll then turn off any of the other layers that we won't be using. We also want to set these layers to 50% opacity for now if they weren't already. We can change that later if we want, but 50% is going to work for us most of um, all the time. To start the colorization, we'll right click on this layer and go up to the very top and select blending options. Right here in the center are three checkboxes for red, green, and blue. We'll uncheck two of them and it doesn't matter which two. We click OK and we can see some crazy stuff is happening on our image. We'll then do the same with the other layer we decided to use, but this time we'll choose a different color to leave checked. So now we've got this image with some very strong colors on it. In some cases, we can maybe leave it this way, but I think it's best to continue on and make some more adjustments. The main adjustment we can make is to put our master image on top of these other image layers and then set its opacity to 50%. Again, we can change that later if we want. Usually once that's done, our colors will go all weird and purple and that's okay. The next step is to flatten all the layers into one. If we do an auto color adjustment by hitting Control Shift B, our original colors should reappear. We can also adjust the levels now. We can maybe tweak these a little later if we need to. Again, we could leave the image here, but I think we can keep going a little bit more. First, let's say we're not 100% happy with these specific colors. We can back up several steps and switch which BSE images we were using or which RGB boxes we had checked in the layers or we can hit Control U and open up the Hue Saturation window. Here, we can actually shift the colors around. So we can move this slider around until we have exactly what we want.
The last thing we may want to play around with is saturation. Now, one of the main things that colorized micrographs do is they call attention to how not real their color is. One of the best ways we can take the edge off your fake colors is by desaturating them. At least a little bit. I suppose there might be some time when you might like to increase the saturation, but these colors that come out of this technique are going to be pretty strong to start off with, and we're mostly going to want to tone them down a bit. And there we have it! We'll maybe want to save this file as a PSD file so we can go back and make changes with it later if we want, but otherwise, we're done! Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of options that we can explore with this technique. What I'm giving you is my basic streamlined workflow. But as you can see, there are tons of things that we can tinker with. One of the most obvious ones is by adding an extra color layer into the image. So let's try that and see what happens. Backing up a few steps, let's include this layer in with the image and make sure a different set of color checkboxes are checked from the other layers. We can also have two colors checked here if we want. We just want to make sure that all the layers are checked differently. So we can see that this gave our image more colors, obviously, but sometimes more colors just make things too busy and ends up being kind of an eyesore. But sometimes it really helps. So what happens if I don't have a segmented BSE detector? Well, there are a few things you can try. One solution is to use the single directional in-chamber SE detector. To do this, you'll need to take an image and then rotate the stage. Either three images with 120 degrees, four images with 90 degrees, or two images with 180 degrees. And when you're taking these images, you can also use the raster rotation to make sure that all the images are oriented the same way when you capture them. Once you have all these images in Photoshop, you'll need to align them and maybe rotate them a little bit. Then choose one of them to be your master image and the others as your color layers. One other thing I tried in my search for colorization mastery is to use an upper or through the lens detector to make a master image and then take multiple images with a lower or in-chamber detector as the color images. I did this because the upper detector image is going to have completely even illumination since it's looking at the sample directly above it. Also, you'll be able to get very high resolution details from this upper detector. It just makes a great master image. The lower detector images may not have as high resolution as the upper detector, but they will be directional, i.e. they will have shadows on them. So I would take one master image from the upper detector and two color images from the lower detector. I was surprised that this mostly worked, but there are some potential issues. Images from an upper and lower detector are not going to match up exactly. There will be some amount of distortion between the two. For example, with the Hitachi Cold Source FESEM, I was able to get away with this technique fairly easily, as the images generally matched pretty well. However, when I tried this with a Zeiss SEM with a Gemini column, the in-chamber and through-the-lens images were so different that there was no way to stretch the images enough to get them to align properly. Mainly what I'm trying to say is that using this process instead of the backscatter images will have varying degrees of success depending on which microscope you're using. Now what you've been waiting for is the quick version. We take the master image in SE or BSE. We take two to four directional BSE images, open all of them in Photoshop, select all of one image and copy. Create a new image the same size as the clipboard image. Paste the copied image into the new image. Copy and paste all of the other images into the new image. Make sure the background layer is all black. Make sure the new image is set to RGB or CMYK color. 
deselect layers you won't use. Make layers you will use 50% opacity. Right-click the layer, select Blending Options, deselect one or two of the color checkboxes. Do the same to your other color layers. Put the master image on top all of the other layers and at 50% opacity. Flatten the image. Control Shift B to auto color tune the image. Control L to adjust the histogram. Control U to open the hue saturation window. Adjust the hue. Adjust the saturation. And you're done. Save it. Thanks for watching the video. Please share it with all your other microscopist buddies out there. There is a lot of potential with this technique and I'd be happy to see someone improve or innovate on this approach. If you want these instructions in written form with lots of pictures, check the info below to download my free PDF book on how to colorize your micrographs with Photoshop. Also visit my darkroom page to purchase prints of some of my micrographs and visit instructinate.com if you're interested in having me come and train you on how to get the most out of your scanning electron microscope. Thanks, we'll see you next time.